A well-trained man. The BAR. 80 shots a minute. But a machine gun is more powerful than a BAR. Nothing but the best for the master race. And this is a machine gunner's dream. He can mow them down like wheat at 250 rounds a minute. That's still the same 30 caliber you've got socked away in your cartridge belt. Coming out of your M1, it's deadly, sure. But when it's pouring out of a machine gun, light or heavy, it can make a man look like a sieve in a matter of seconds. Machine guns can tackle all kinds of targets. For example, it's got plenty of pepper for a dish like this. That doesn't have to be a treat. Your machine gun can do a lot more to something that's breathing. And this won't be a wall much longer. The main job of the heavy machine gun is to cover an area with bullets. Two or more guns can make a peaceful pond look like this. Principally because of vibrations, the bullets of a single gun make this long pattern. This is the beaten zone made at a thousand yards. The enemy, one thousand yards away. Long range for some weapons, but not for the stuff these boys are packing. It's just what this machine gun's looking for. Ever hear a battle between two machine guns? They talk back and forth for a while, then all of a sudden, one of them runs out of dialogue. Our machine gun has a good position. It's protected from flat trajectory fire. But the enemy has mortars, and mortar fire is high angle fire which can slam down from the sky. There's only one thing to do in a case like this. Get ready to move to another position. Meanwhile, we have mortars too. Two kinds. This 81 millimeter, whose shell has an effective radius of 25 yards, and the 60 millimeter, whose shell has an effective radius of 17 yards. Our mortars can take care of the enemy's machine guns. And with the high angle of fire, their mortars as well. Of course, an exploding mortar shell can kill. But let's see just how convincing it can be. The overhead cover for this command post is two feet thick, made of dirt and logs and a swell target for the 81 millimeter heavy high explosive shell. The shell weighs 10 and 3 quarter pounds and it's equipped with a delay action fuse which explodes after penetration. The mortar also fires smoke shell. The white phosphorus may set fire to very dry materials, and it will produce casualties. But its main job is to blind the enemy with a heavy white smoke. Here come the big boys, the sluggers. Tough? Sure. Powerful armor, heavy firepower, very tough. But they can be taken. You've got the weapons to blind him. Burn his pants off, blow him to hell. Watch. An ordinary bottle. Fill it with fire and you've got a Molotov cocktail. 
These cocktails can be homemade from gasoline, crank case drainage, and saturated rags. Wipe the stuff with a match. Three alarms for any tank in the business. If you have one of these M1 frangible grenades equipped with an igniter, you can forget the homemade cocktail. But whichever you use, the Molotov cocktail's no party for guys in a tank. You may not always have a cocktail, but you will have a rifle. It won't rip the tracks off a tank or puncture the armor, but a rifle can make it button up. You can jab his eyes out. Blind a tank and it's practically out of business. But you don't have to gamble on hitting a target as small as a slit if you've got an anti-tank grenade. This is the most powerful weapon you carry. It makes you a walking arsenal. It weighs one and a quarter pounds, and it'll do a go-to-hell job on any light or medium tank. Doesn't look like much, does it? But don't kid yourself. The steel that came from that hole was shattered into fragments that whizzed inside the tank like a gang of hornets. You can put that kind of a hole in a tank from 75 yards. But remember, whenever you can, hold your fire. Wait till the tank is smack up on you. Now, give it to him. Hit him square where the armor is thinnest, on the rear or side. Don't let the words anti-tank throw you. Watch what it can do to an enemy machine gun packed with plenty of sandbagging. See? It doesn't have to be a tank for the anti-tank grenade to go to work. But the anti-tank grenade is not the only one you can fire off the end of your rifle. For example, you can't lob a grenade by hand at these Nazis. They're too far away. But you've got fragmentation grenades. And if you launch them with either your rifle or carbine, it's like sending your Sunday punch airmail. There are two kinds of fragmentation grenades. This one is time-fused. You fire it when you want an air burst above the ground. The other one has an impact fuse, like the anti-tank grenade. It explodes as soon as it hits hard enough ground. Both fragmentation grenades carry about 200 yards and have about the same effect. If any of those supermen are within five yards of either burst, finished. There's another weapon in the infantry regiment. When it first came out, soldiers thought it must have been found in a pile of junk. This is far from the truth. The first time the Nazis got a peek at it, they turned it a secret weapon because they didn't know what hit them. It's called a bazooka. It has knockout written all over it. Like everything else in the army, it's got an official name, the anti-tank rocket launcher. And it'll tackle almost any kind of target. It can stop a tank all by itself. Stop it cold. A few on a railroad, and the enemy goes back to mules. A sandbag emplacement is no place for the enemy to hide, not when he's hiding from the bazooka. Don't think this pillbox is heaven. The bazooka makes it hell. But the bazooka has one special dish, a light or medium tank. It'll knock a hole through the sides of a tank all day, from any range up to 200 yards. Okay, you've seen a rifle smash a vision slit. You know how the anti-tank grenade and the bazooka can plow through armor. Now let's see how the 37 millimeter anti-tank gun earns its keep. Against troop carriers and crew served weapons, it's effective to about a thousand yards with high explosive shell. The armor piercing